because our director works for a university and he was able to use some of the footage in a class. We're doing the same thing with Oedipus this year. Last year was on book. It was a stage reading, but this is totally off book. Um, and uh, there's some realities though of what we're doing here tonight. This was rehearsed to be videotaped, but here we are on a stage. So we didn't rehearse it to be on a stage. So it's not a fully realized play, but it'll give you a very good sense of what, what we did to get ready for our videotaping. Um, so some of the things are, you know, when you videotape, you can turn off the camera, you can move sets, you can change costumes. So we're gonna be scrambling a little bit to handle things like that. Also, when you're videotaping, you don't have to have everything memorized. You can do another take. We're pretty much off book, but you might hear once or twice an actor calling for a line, and Christine, our stage manager here, will help them out with a line. Um, uh, that, I think that's it as far as what we're doing, as far as related to filming in a stage uh, setting. Um, the thing that's exciting about this production is that we are using a translation by a, uh, a scholar named David Green, G-R-E-N-E, -E, and it is a it's very, very well-respected translation of this play. There's many translations of Oedipus the King, which you might also know as Oedipus Rex. And, but this translation was done, I think, in the 50s, and it was done in um, metered verse. It's poetry. And so it's really challenging for these actors, and I think all of you know someone here who's in the cast, so I really uh, want you to be aware of how much work that was put in to, for some of these people to, to take on this text, because not only is it a challenge just to speak it as good poetry, but to embody it, act it, is really, really a challenge. And um, this cast has been quite game. Robert, who I know we have quite, quite a few Peters, I'm sensing over in this area. Um, Robert first started working with this text almost a year ago, that long, and that's very long to work with a text. A few of our other actors came on board like six weeks ago, and they've been very game. Remy, um, Phil, and Sharon, who I know some of you know, um, had very limited rehearsal schedule, but they've done a great job to get up to speed. Um, also with this, when, these, when this play was performed 2,500 years ago, Sophocles, Oedipus the King, it was performed for 17,000 people, we expect, or what we think. And so it was done, it had to be big with a mask on, and the whole emphasis was on words, not actions. So if you like poetry, you like words, you come to the right place. If you like action and chases and car crashes, I can't give you that tonight. I can speak loud, but that's about it. So I'm going to put this up to you, be very upfront with you. This is going to be a challenging play for you guys. Our attention spans are not what the Greeks had 2,500 years ago. They didn't have anything to do except listen to stories, you know, tend the goats, whatnot. We have so many things that our attention spans are short. It will be a challenge, but stick with it. Uh, there's really a lot of really rich dialogue and a very interesting story that's unfolding. And I'm going to tell you about that story. It goes something like this. Uh, Jocasta and Laius or the king of, uh, of Thebes. And they had a young son. And when you had a, anything that was important in your life, you went to the oracle to find out, well, what's, how's this all going to turn out? Well, the oracle tell them, told them, uh, this kid you just had, he is going to kill Laius and sleep with Jocasta. Well, we've got to get rid of this one. <laughs> so they took it off to, and gave it to a herdsman to take it off to the hill to basically make away with it. The young kid's ankles were pierced. And then another shepherd came along and took pity on it from the first shepherd and said, I'm going to take this kid back to my town, Corinth. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give it to the king and queen there who can't have kids as a gift. And so then Oedipus, or actually didn't have a name at this point, but they went, look, he has swollen feet. We'll call him Oedipus, which in ancient Greek meant swollen foot. And so Oedipus grew up to be a very impressive young man. But there was this rumor going around that he wasn't actually the son of Merope and Polybus. So he went to the oracle, of course, said, well, tell me about this. The oracle wouldn't answer this, but said, you know what? You're going to sleep with your mother and kill your father. And Oedipus went, oh, okay, I, I got to run. I got to get out of here. I can't do that. I got to leave Corinth. So Oedipus goes on the road to escape the curse. 
And along the way, he comes across a carriage with a very important looking king in it and some servants. And they have a standoff at the road where no one will get out of the way. And they get into a fight and Oedipus kills all of them, including the king, except for one servant who escapes, who's going to show up in this play. So early Greek road rage, basically. <laughs> right there on the spot, Oedipus leaves, doesn't think too much of this, and heads off toward, he comes to this town of Thebes. And there he meets the Sphinx. Now the Sphinx has been terrorizing Thebes. Anyone who comes up to try and pass the certain area the Sphinx asks a riddle, and everyone keeps getting it wrong, and the Sphinx kills them, especially the young men. So Oedipus comes along to the Sphinx, very confident young man, and says, all right, what's your riddle? And the Sphinx says, what creature walks on four legs in the morning, two legs in the afternoon, and three legs at night? And the answer, the trail you know, is man. The Sphinx is disgraced, throws herself off the cliff, and all of, all, everybody in Thebes is so excited and says, ah, you, the stranger, Oedipus, you know what we're going to do? You know, our king recently was killed out on the highway, and so we're going to make you king, and you get to marry his, uh, his wife, the queen, a really beautiful woman. So he does. They have four kids together. Everything's going along great. But then suddenly, about a year or two ago, this plague starts. The women aren't having children anymore. People are dying. The crops are failing. And no one can figure out why. But they learn that it has something to do with Apollo. Now Apollo in this play, you're going to hear Apollo called all sorts of names. Uh, the god, uh, Boxius, a bunch of different names. It's all Apollo. So they, all the citizens come to Oedipus and say, you've got to save us. You've got to save us from this plague. And he says, okay, I'll tell you what. I'm going to send out my brother-in-law, Creon, played by me. And I'm going to send out the, to search for the seer who sees the truth of all of this stuff, Tiresias. And he does that. So as we're getting ready to start the play, what's exciting about this production is that usually, if you ever see this play, if you were looking back here, you would see a big palace. And there would be all these steps. And there would be, in the ancient times, what's called a chorus, actually sit, uh, sitting on the steps, about 50 people. And we think they were just citizens, not actually actors. And there'd be two groups, 25 in each, and they each sort of dance and sing a part. And they were basically citizens expressing their opinions about the plague and the Oedipus and the gods. Now we can't obviously recreate that. So a few times you're gonna see people come up and read actually from the book, the chorus's parts. Because in filming we we're planning to do that all with voiceovers. So we can only approximate it for you here. But what's so exciting is that in our production is the palace is up there and you are all the citizens of Thebes sitting on the steps. If you come a little early, I would have given you a part, but we're happy to have you just watch. So you will see the actors addressing the citizens of Thebes, all of you at times, especially Oedipus and me, Creon. Um, so as we're start, about to start the play, what is going on is all of you have gathered because you want to find out Oedipus is going to give news about how he's going to stop this plague. And that's where we're going to start. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Children, young sons and daughters of old Cadmus, why do you sit here with your suppliant crowns? The town is heavy with a mingled burden of sounds and smells, of groans and hymns and incense. I did not think it fit that I should hear of this from messengers, but came myself, I, Oedipus, whom all men call the great. <laughs> 